Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Blue Monkey Forensics. In this video, we will be solving the cipher questions from the Magnet Virtual Summit 2023 Capture the Flag Contest. The cipher series of questions are all about decoding messages. So for this video, I'm going to be using mostly two main tools as recommended by the king of CTFs, Kevin Pagano. Uh, those tools are decode.fr and then Cyberchef. Decode is especially useful as the cipher identifier uh, will help you narrow down the gazillions of different ciphers that are out there. And then CyberChef is really good at uh, making different kinds of algorithms available to you and you can actually uh, do a whole bunch of different tweaking and get you what you need. Question one, time to practice our CW. All right, so from past Magnet CTFs, I've learned to read the titles of the questions carefully as they are really helpful with clues to what you need to do to solve the question. In this case, I have no idea what CW could mean, but we're presented with a bunch of tiny dots and dashes, and that to me means Morse code. So then I pull up the handy and CyberChef tool at icyberchef.com. And then uh, copy that from the question and paste it into the input of CyberChef. And then go ahead and uh, do a search operation for Morse code. And then go ahead and grab that and drag that into the bar over here. And then we can see the output immediately says key is pineapple on pizza is great. So then I go back to the CTF question and I type in pineapple on pizza is great and it's wrong so i try again this time i remove the exclamation mark maybe that was uh, not necessary so that was wrong again and the good thing is that this question did not have limited tries so i decided to enter the whole thing with the word key and the colon and that was the right answer so it is literally the entire thing key colon pineapple on pizza is great and I thought it was kind of weird that the word key would be needed since I thought that what we're looking for and found the key. But time was ticking, so I moved on. Interesting fact, though, after the CTF was closed, I had time to look up on the internet and learn that CW stands for continuous wave, which refers to the Morse code transmissions using radio signals. So now I know. Question two. Time to return to the base X and eat a salad. So we're given this uh, blob of text of alpha numerics and then ends in two equal signs. From my experience with encoding, the uh, equal signs at the end of a string usually means that it's a base 64 encoded message. And so along with the hint in the title of base 6, I figured I was on the right track. So once again, I pull up CyberChef. And I paste in the string with the double equal signs. And then I search for base64 encoding. And then I drag that over. And then I get the output that says ly colon and then a bunch of gibberish. So I figure I might not have the base64 right. Maybe it was just um, one of the other base encodings. So I tried all the ones along the left there that CyberChef have. And none of them seemed to give me anything that made any sense. So I stared at the screen for a long, long time. And finally, I looked back at the title again and noticed the reference to the salad at the end there. So I thought, oh, Caesar salad. And there is something called a Caesar cipher. And I didn't see that one in CyberChef. So I headed over to deco.fr and then searched for the word Caesar. And then uh, the Caesar cipher popped up. So then I copied the output of the base64 decoder into that box and asked the system to brute force decrypt. And the first solution here says IV colon I'm hungry, I'm hungry, which looks like it must be the answer, right? Because if you look at the rest of these decrypted solutions, they're just a bunch of gibberish letters. And it's just too coincidental to have the word hungry uh, among these bunch of other random letters. So I typed in, I'm hungry, I'm hungry into the answer box. 
and it was wrong. All right, maybe it was just I'm hungry once. Type that in. Wrong. All right. So I learned from question one not to overthink this and just give it the whole answer of I V colon I'm hungry. I'm hungry, which was the correct answer. Once again, I don't understand why the I V colon was there. Time was ticking, so moving on. Question three. I can't remember that URL. I wish I could rewind my day and bookmark it. So we're given a bunch of alphanumeric characters, and then mixed in there is this percent symbol. And staring at this for a few moments, and then reading the clue again, I keyed off the words URL and then rewind. And if I look at the last couple of characters, well, we can read this backwards as HTTPS. All right, so that looks like a URL, and again, I guess the rewind means it's it's going backwards. So then I noticed there's these ASCII codes that are embedded in the URL, which I've seen before. If you ever use the Mac, you've probably seen the percent twenty, right, for the space. So I started separating out the ASCII codes, and then by using a ASCII chart, I substitute the ASCII characters back in. So from the uh, starting from the left here, a Percent three D is an equal sign. Percent three F is a question mark. Next up, we have a percent two D, and then referencing that on the ASCII chart is a minus sign. Next up, we have a percent two F, and that's the forward slash. Percent two E is a period, and then we come to percent two F. Twice again, and we know that is a forward slash, and then lastly, percent three A is a colon. So then I just type everything backwards. I get this HTTPS colon slash slash YouTube, and then this particular video. And at this point, I noticed that there were extra questions that popped up which were not there before. So I must have unlocked them when I answered one of the previous questions. Because when I first started, there was only four questions, and now there are more. Question four: I am excited for this year's CTF. No caps. All right. So the message that we get is a alphanumeric string. That doesn't look familiar to me at all. Right? It's not going to convert from hex to ASCII code or anything like that. So once again, I had to stare at the title to get a clue on where to start. And reading this again, even though the end of the title has the words "no caps," there were actually three letters in here that were capitalized: A, E, and S. So basically, I copy the string into CyberChef, and then I search for A E S, and then drag the A E S decryptor operator over, and I get an error that I don't understand. Uh, I'm looking at the empty fields named key and IV, and I realize that's why the answers to number one and two started with the words key and IV. I need those for this question. So I copy and paste it. Pineapple on pizza is great! Exclamation mark into the key field, and then I'm hungry. I'm hungry into the IV field, but there's still an error. Right after more staring, I realized that the words I typed in are actually not hex, so I switched those two boxes to Latin one, and it's still not working. And then once again, looking at the clue, it says no caps, so I changed everything to lowercase, and voila, I get this URL, which is the answer. Question five: Bin to hex keeps reminding us of this rule. So we get a really, really long string of ones and zeros. So this is binary for sure. And from the clue, we have to convert it to hex, right? This is binary. So I'm just going to copy all this text and paste it into CyberChef. And so in the operator section here, I search for the, for the from binary operation. Which gives us uh, uh, all hex, and then in case you did not know this, you can actually stack operations in CyberChef. So I will actually search for the from hex operation, and then drag that over, and then we get our flag. 
which is you must use the same email address on the CTF site as you use to register for the conference. Additional user accounts are prohibited, and any user found creating multiple accounts will be disqualified. And it is ironic that I actually violated this as I got confused with which email I used to register for the conference and used the wrong one to sign into the CTF. I got booted out pretty quickly, but thanks to Jessica, been to Hex, and she got me back on track. So thank you again, Jessica. Uh, yes, I am stupid and can't follow your simple instructions. Sorry. Question six. I understood math till they started adding letters. All right. I got to admit that I had no clue at all on how to approach this one, even after I read that title over and over again. I started to actually do some math and using the ASCII code for letters and just got really, really complicated and down the rabbit hole. And that didn't get me anywhere except for wasting a lot of time. Then I thought, you know what? Why don't I just take the letters out from the clue? So I get the letters of capital Y, O, U, R, E, capital D, O, I, N, G, capital G, R, A, T, E. So I just typed those all in, and apparently that was the right answer. Again, I have no idea if that's the, the way to solve this puzzle, but that seems to have worked for me. So there you go. All right, so those are my methods for solving the cipher portion for the 2023 Magnet Forensics CTF. I hope this was useful to you. For more videos on Capture the Flag walkthroughs, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.